Hey guys, it's Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, thank you for finding me. If you want to give us a sub, that would be a huge help. If you want to give us a like, if you want to give us a comment, all of those things would be greatly, greatly appreciated. What are we here to talk about today? Today we are here to talk about the Spectrum Films releases, kind of. What I'm really here to talk about today is how I'm able to watch those releases because I do not speak Cantonese or French, which are the language options available in those releases. So really more broadly speaking, this video is about how to get English language options on releases that do not already have them. Before I start, I cannot emphasize enough that this video is not advocating piracy. Like I'm watching these movies on my own. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting them on my computer, I'm storing them on my hard drive, I'm getting subtitle or dub files on them, and then uh, that's that's like it like I watch them myself and I keep them on my hard drive and that's the end of it so uh, and I know that there are groups of people who are um, like little fan communities who sometimes share movies amongst one another those communities are very very small from everything that I understand and they encourage one another to buy the blu-rays um, and kind of send each other files basically as proof of concept like look how fantastic this looks go and buy it so I encourage you beyond anything else to buy Blu-rays, uh, if you're a huge fan of Hong Kong cinema or whatever cinema you love, I'm looking at labels like Spectrum Films, I'm looking at 88 Films, I'm looking at Eureka and Criterion, like buy their releases, support the official legitimate releases, and uh, put as much money into that as you can so that these films keep on going and it encourages the preservation and the restoration of classic Hong Kong films. So. That being said, there's not a lot that you need to do to watch these movies, and it may seem daunting if you're not a big tech person. I taught myself this stuff over the course of some time, like a couple years or whatever, and uh, it's not super difficult. I'm not really that tech savvy. You don't need that much stuff in order to do it. You do need a computer, and you need an independent Blu-ray drive. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to the Blu-ray drive that I bought. So basically what that is, is it's like a disk drive with a USB that you plug into your computer. It's a little square. You pop it in there. That's all you really need to do. Once you have the Blu-ray drive plugged into your computer, put whatever disk you want to put in there. Now, here's where you need to get something. There is a program called MakeMKV. It's all one word. M-A-K-E, the word make, and then M-K-V, which is a file type. Blu-rays are difficult because Blu-rays have lots of encoding on them. The most popular program for ripping stuff is Handbrake. I use Handbrake when I rip DVDs. Handbrake has not been able to read the Blu-rays that I've tried to create files for on my computer because it can't get through the layers of encoding and encryption. So I did some research and I found this program called Make MKV. And I now swear by this program because this program will take everything off the disk and store it on a folder on your computer. You will get the menus, you will get the bonus features, you will get all the subtitle and audio options, and you will get the film. And uh, it's just, it's fantastic. So go and download this program. Like I said, it's free. Once you've downloaded it, open it up. And you're going to see a little icon in the middle that looks like a drive, like a disk drive, right? And once the disk is in the, um, the Blu-ray drive, the, the program Make MKV will read that it's there. And you'll, when you look at the screen, you'll be able to see that it says like the title of the disk that's in there. You click that little icon that looks like a little Blu-ray drive. And what the program is going to do is start reading and extracting like all the files that are on the disk, and that'll take a couple minutes. While it's doing that, go and make a folder wherever you want to save the movie, on a hard drive, on your desktop, wherever. Call it wherever you want. I've been calling it the name of the movie, right? So if I'm ripping like The Longest Night, I'll create a folder called The Longest Night, right? So once the Make MKV program is done reading all the uh, files on the disk, it's gonna tell you, hey, I'm finished. There's a little icon that looks like a folder, like a manila envelope, like a manila folder, right? Click on that and it'll bring up your like folders on your computer so that you can select where you want to save the files. Once you've selected your folder, you just click OK, and then you go back and there's a little button that just says Make MKV. You hit that. It's, it might take a while, like it might take an hour, it might take two hours, but what the program is going to do is extract everything from that Blu-ray as MKV files. 
While that's happening, if you do not have VLC Media Player, download that. This is an incredible media player that does all kinds of fantastic stuff. It plays movies, but it does a bunch of stuff in addition to that. It's basically like the standard for people who love movies and watch a lot of movies on their computer. Like I've never heard anyone else ever mention another type of program to be watching movies on. Like this is the one that you need to get. So go and download VLC Media Player, okay? Once the files are done downloading, on your computer, find the one that is the movie. It's gonna be the longest one, obviously. If you hover your mouse over the files, it'll tell you the length, right? Because it's gonna name them like something, like the, the names that, the file names assigned by Make MKB are kind of weird. They're just like numbers and letters and stuff, right? Then you can rename all the files if you want, but find the longest one, click on that, uh, and open it in the VLC media player. Once it's open, there's a subtitle heading on the top menu of VLC Media Player. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to add your own subtitle file. Now, to find a subtitle file, go to Google, type in the name of the movie, and then type in the letters SRT. SRT is the file extension for subtitle files. You're going to find a bunch of different websites that host subtitle files. Some of them, for some releases, when you go into them, you'll even see flags. Like you'll see the Union Jack for English language subs, and then you'll see, you know, what I mean, whatever other language that you'll see subtitles for, they'll usually put the flag as like the icon. And then you look for the flag for your language, I guess. Um, like, I don't know how you would do Spanish <laughs> because like so many countries speak Spanish or like French, like is it Canadian French or French French or, you know, I don't know. I just look for the English one. <laughs> it's either a US flag or a Union Jack. And sometimes there will actually be a list of all of the different ones that you can choose. Like this one is from a Blu-ray, this one is from a DVD, this one is, you know, pick whichever file you want, download it to your computer. If it ends up downloading not as an SRT file, but as like a notepad file, which sometimes happens to me, it's very easy to deal with that. You just Google convert notepad or word file or whatever to SRT. And there are websites that will do that for you for free. And you just do that and you download the file. Go back to VLC Media Player, put your movie file in there, like click it, open to play. Click on the subtitle menu, click add subtitle file, find that SRT file that you downloaded uh, and open it and it will load onto the movie. Now, occasionally you will get SRT files that do not exactly match the movie. They're like 20 seconds. I'm like, I got one from Wild Search once that was like, because I had a rip of like a Hong Kong DVD with no English subs or like something weird like that. So I had to find an English subtitle file and the spot that the movie started was like 20 seconds off from where the subtitle title file started. If you just Google adjust subtitles in VLC, there's a really easy shortcut. It's like control and like plus or minus or whatever. And it just changes where the subtitle starts. So you can put it back like 10 seconds or put it forward 10 seconds or something like that. It's pretty easy. Um, if you want to actually burn the subtitles into the movie file so that you have a complete file with both, you want to download something called vid encoder. And once you've downloaded vid encoder, that will not only put subtitle files on your, on your movie file, it'll actually convert it from an MKV to an MP4. And MP4s are actually a lot more versatile for like, like Adobe Premiere, for instance, the editing software will not accept an MKV file. You have to convert it to MP4. So if you're going to do editing of movies and cutting clips and like making whatever, like tribute videos and stuff, if that's what you're into, you'll probably want to have the MP4 version anyway. So vid encoder or vid coder, it's one of those two. I will put a link in the description to that program. And basically all you have to do is there's a little button that says video file. When you open that program, click video file, put your video file in there. Um, and then if you want to add subtitles, you'll see a button on there that just says subtitle. You click on that and you click add SRT. You throw your file on there and, um, you click the destination, so like where you're gonna save it on your computer will open up your files and you can pick where you wanna save it. And then you hit encode and that will encode it. Now, it could take a long ass time to convert MKV to MP4 at the file size of a Blu-ray. Some file sizes for Blu-rays are huge. I put As Tears Go By on my computer so that I could get some clips for our review of that film, the Criterion release. The movie file was like 35 gigs or something like that. It took like nine hours to convert that file from an MKB to an MP4. So be aware that it might take a really long time.
If you have any questions about any of this, just put them in the comments down below and I'll try to respond to them. My name is Will. This is Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society, and this is how you can watch these really incredible films that don't have English language options. <laughs>